What's up, board game people? The Dark Quarter from Van Ryder and Lucky Duck Games has launched this morning and funded in just 32 minutes. We're going to take a quick spin through the campaign and look at the pledge levels, what's included in the core box, the add-ons on offer, and discuss briefly what the game is about and a bit of how it plays. As always, all opinions expressed are my own. I don't receive any compensation from the game companies for making these videos. I make them for the benefit of gamers like you and me. If I make a mistake or if we disagree about something, please let me know in the comments and we can discuss. If you like this type of content, please subscribe so we can help you stay up to date with the latest board gaming and crowdfunding news. One additional warning is this is a mature game, and this video may border on mature in language and subject. Now grab your beignets and coffee, it's going to be a long night. The murder was brutal and archaic. The detective in charge took one look and vomited in the bushes. He isn't paid enough to look at this shit. A call was placed for outside help, and the only people who responded are the Beaumont Agency. They were asked to consult on what would become the first of the Congo murders. Welcome to New Orleans, Louisiana, circa 1980, a vibrant city of music, food, and magic. Neon lights flicker in dirty puddles up and down Bourbon Street. The innovations of the modern world clash with the ancient and terrible traditions. This is a world full of magic where hexing curses are sold on every street corner and where even the most mundane crimes have a tinge of the supernatural to them. New Orleans is full of gangs and organizations who vie for influence over the people and control of the powers hidden deep within the Dark Quarter. The Dark Quarter is a heavily narrative digital hybrid board game with characters who are intimately connected to the story. The choices you make could result in their triumphs, deaths, or even worse. You'll play through feature-length scenarios to test your wits and moral fiber as you overcome human and supernatural challenges. Every character is important. They're deeply troubled and often wrestling with their own inner demons while attempting to contribute to solving these heinous crimes. Decisions made by players will make a lasting impact on the city and the story in often unexpected ways. The game is an open-world experience that allows you to explore and investigate along your own path. They tout the Dark Quarter as being a cinematic, cooperative experience that allows players to work together to solve the mysteries of New Orleans, advancing their characters and building towards a grand finale that will test both the player's skills and metal. Let's take a look at the pledge levels that are offered. First up at the 1 euro mark is clearly marked as giving you access to the pledge manager. That's smart. Next at 59 euros you can grab the rookie pledge that will give you the base game and the Yesterday Demon and other short stories expansion. Then at 94 euros, you can catch the Detective Pledge with the base game, the Yesterday Demon expansion, and the Lost to the Night expansion. This is your gameplay all-in level. Last, we find the Whole Damn Agency Pledge that gets you, simply put, everything that's offered from day one. You get the base game, Yesterday Demon, Lost to the Night expansion, the Deluxe Metal Experience tokens, Deluxe Plastic tokens, and the Deluxe Miniatures upgrade. So what are we getting in the core box? The core box includes four playable characters with their character boards, a miniature, five dice, eight character markers, and 11 ability cards. You'll get John Robichaud, the Widower, Julia Paris, the Ex-Casket Girl, Constance Moreau, the Voodoo Magician, and Winter Mullins, the Drunk Medium. You'll get a city board, 44 location tiles with four crime scenes, NPC markers, location markers, experience tokens, points of interest markers, a finale marker, and skill cubes. In the way of cards, we'll be getting 64 consumable cards and 34 story cards. For miniatures, you'll also receive a Cursed Werewolf, the Executioner, the Dark Priestess, and Baron Samadhi. And the core will include a rulebook and four feature-length scenarios. In the Yesterday Demon Box, which is a prequel expansion with four scenarios exploring the sordid past of our characters, we're getting daily unlocks to reveal the contents. The first daily unlocked is called the Chef's Kiss Scenario, exploring the past of Winter Mullins and a previous business associate. With this scenario, we're getting two ability cards, a new scene card, two location cards, and it looks as though more will be unlocked for the scenario tomorrow, so we'll have to keep checking back. The Lost to the Night expansion explores the story of a band of misfits brought together by their connections to a kidnapped 13-year-old girl named Susanna. They will investigate and attempt to do what the police cannot and bring her home. This group congregates around the Alligator Club and has seen the dark and magical underbelly of Dark Orleans with their own eyes. They also know that Susanna's disappearance might be connected to the Arcane, and she is no ordinary teenager. In the box, we'll get 30 location tiles, 3 scene tiles. We get a new cast of playable characters including Jane, Blue JTN, the sister, Hector Zavaleta, the protector, Furman One-Eye Lafayette, the teacher, and Evelyn Dansky, the mother. We'll get 21 NPC markers, 28 consumable cards, and 21 story cards. Miniatures include one small and one medium NPC mini, and the giant Honey Island Swamp Monster. 
This expansion includes three feature-length scenarios. There are also a few add-ons being offered. First up, they're offering the deluxe set of miniatures for 30 euros. The miniatures include the Cursed Dead Saturday, Arugaroo, Miss Babette, Rex, Dead Saturday, Mama Belle, A Casket Girl, Esme, A Strange Man, De La Cruz, Sophie Romero, Louis LeBlanc, Charlotte Baton, and the Dead Saturday's ringleader, plus six more miniatures still to come. Next, for 20 euros, you can grab a set of metal experience tokens. And for another 20 euros, you can get the deluxe plastic molded tokens. This game is expected to ship in time for Halloween 2023, which would make for an amazing Halloween game night, or a live stream if we feel adventurous. Shipping will be charged in the pledge manager, and it seems VAT is already included. Now check the FAQ for details, because us Americans are idiots about the whole VAT situation, so don't take my word for it. So what are my thoughts on the game and campaign? Well, I've been excited for this game since it was announced. I love the city of New Orleans, and I think it offers the perfect backdrop for stories such as these. The rich history, the occult dabblings, and the gritty nightlife should serve the game well. My biggest concern is a lack of scenarios, and that's based solely off how I like to play. Scenarios are described as feature length, running for two to three hours per scenario. Now, I'm pretty sure they mean for you to replay the game with different characters, and that there will be different paths to explore each time you do. But I'm not one to replay something narrative too often, so for me, I'd maybe want to see twice the amount of scenarios in the base game. I'll admit though that I'm, there may be plenty of reasons to replay scenarios, and if that's the case, my argument would be totally moot. An imagined lack of content on my side really isn't going to scare me away from the game. This is a solid back for me. In fact, I'm all in and I don't think that will be changing. I simply love all the world building the creators have put into the game, and I want to see it taken fully advantage of. An example would be the section of the campaign page where we meet some of the powers that be in New Orleans. It highlights the Beaumont Agency, the Laveau Corporation, Kaz Durink, the Casket Girls, the Deadly Saturdays, the Rougarous, and the Blinkers. And this just may be scratching the surface. I want to see them take advantage of these organizations and how they affect the story. I also love the cast of characters they've assembled for the core box. I want to see their stories continue on, move from case to case, and mature. I'm hoping that in the end we'll see maybe another expansion adding to those stories as well. I do like that they've allowed themselves the ability to add new characters and that the Lost to the Night expansion is able to introduce a new investigation with a new team in the same world. I guess moving forward, I'm just really hoping they support the product beyond launch with more expansions and more of this gritty macabre mystery. I don't want them to rely too heavily on the community to produce content with their scenario editor. The components for the game look great. I love the different sets of dice that have been shown, and the art has a consistent style. But I will say that some of the cards remind me of Mansion of Madness, and for some reason in my head that dates them a bit. The tokens look vibrant and easy to read, and the table presence is great with everything spread across the table like a true investigation is taking place. To touch on the miniatures, they're more than sufficient. I'm not exactly sure how much table time some of the deluxe set of miniatures will see, but they'll do perfectly to help further pull you into the story unfolding on your tabletop. The app is a nice touch, and these companies are used to working with apps, so I'm hoping it just improves on the quality of some of their past performances. In short, I'm just as excited for this game as I ever have been, and I truly hope this campaign is huge for these two great companies. Well, that's pretty much it, folks. A great-looking game and a well-built campaign. If you like this type of board gaming and crowdfunding coverage, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button and helping us grow the channel. I appreciate you watching, and remember to play something fun tonight.